Amen, everybody. Welcome to Devotions with Stoney. I am Stoney Klango. Thank you for joining us in today's devotion. The title of our devotion today is The Power of Love. The Power of Love. The Apostle Paul said something that has captured my heart for a very long time. He says, the love of Christ compels me. It compels me. It, it, you know, the word compel is almost like a word. It, it, it forces me, but not directly to force without your own um, um, and response. It's more like it pushes me towards. It, 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 it strongly encourages me to do something to go preach the gospel, to reach to others. The love of Christ compels me. Well, I wanna tell you, my friends, if you didn't know, well, know it today. Love is a powerful thing. The love of God, most especially, is a very powerful thing. There is power in love, my friends. There is power in love. Love is not just some flimsy, fickly thing. No, the love the Bible talks about is powerful. There is power in love. And we're going to talk about the power of love today. Let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 13, verse 34. The book of John chapter 13, verse 34. You see, um, the, the disciple or of Jesus or the apostle John was really into this um, a love thing. And he was really into it because the Bible talks about him, uh, describes him as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And so I think he was operating from the revelation of the relationship that he had with Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's why the, John talks about love a lot in the book of John, in the book of 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. So much talk about love. And we're going to be reading some of that today. But we read first the book of John, chapter 13, verse 34 to 35. John 13, verse 34 to 35. And it says, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another, this is Jesus speaking, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. I want you to note this, there is a repetition here. Whenever something is repeated in the Bible, it's because the author of that repetition wants to emphasize on that text. He wants the reader to to, to really take it in and, and, and he wants to, there is a clarity, there is a sense of importance placed on that text, hence why it's repeated in the same context. So let me read that again. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. It's repeated. To love one another, it's repeated in that verse. By this, will know all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another you see i'm reminded of the song from this scripture this is my commandment that you love one another that your joy may be full this is my commandment that you love one another that your joy may be full by this the world will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another the only way the world is going to know that you are a follower of jesus christ listen to me my friends is by love not just the love as the world deems it to be because i'll tell you the difference between the love of the world and the love of god there's a clear difference right there there are so many differences but one of the one of the stark differences between the love of the world and the love of god is this the love of the world does not rebuke when you are in the wrong. The love of the world does not correct. Listen to me. This is the love of God. If he sees a child, his child is running into a fire. The love of God is the love of a father and the love of a mother, right? If a, if, if a mom sees a child going towards fire, that's dangerous for that child and that child doesn't know when it's just running headward into fire and that father screams god stop stop and forcefully tries to drag that child away from the fire right and the child may end up crying and oh you know throwing your pram and throwing your toys but the reason why that father or mother forcefully runs after that child and 
drags the child away from the fire or screams or shouts at the child and says, get away from the fire, is because the child does not understand that the fire is dangerous. But the father or mother understands that the fire is dangerous and so they seek to snatch their child whom they love away from such danger. But you see, the love of the world sees you in danger and says, oh, I love them, so I'm not going to say anything. I love them, so I'm just going to let them live their life. I love them, so I'm just going to let them run to the arms of danger. Well, that's different from the love of God because the Bible says, whom the Lord loveth, he rebukes. Whom the Lord loves, he rebukes. So there, right there, there is a stark, huge difference between the love of God and the love of man. The love of God corrects you when you're wrong because it wants to get you on the right path. The love of man will be like, ah, I don't want to offend them, so I'm not going to say anything. That's the love of man. The love of God will correct you when it sees danger. Red alert, red alert. Blinking, boom, boom, alarm, alarm. Stay away from danger, stay away from danger. The love of the world will just wrap their arms and say, I don't want to hurt them. They, they may be in the wrong, but I don't want to say anything. That's the love of the world. It's different. <laughs> Amen. So that's the stark difference right there. There's so much about love. I'm not going to teach you everything about love in this devotion, but love is how the world will know that you are a disciple of Jesus. This is not me saying it. This is Jesus saying it with his own mouth. Love is how the world will know that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Not your screaming, not your shouting, it's how you love others. Amen. Let's go to another scripture. First John, I told you a lot of our scriptures on love are from the book of John, uh, the apostle John. First John chapter four, verse 16 to 21. This is the last scripture we'll read um, because this is a devotion and so it shouldn't take too long. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 to 21. 4, verse 16 to 21. It says, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. Listen to that. God doesn't just love us. God doesn't just have love for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Mm. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, as Christ is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear because fear involves torment but he who fears has not been made perfect in love we love him because he first loved us if someone says i love god and hates his brother he is a liar for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen how can he love god whom he has not seen and this commandment we have from him how do we know we have this commandment from him john writes about it jesus saying it directly himself in the first scripture that we read and this commandment we have from him that he who loves god must love his brother also so what's the sign that you love god is that you love your brother we see the love of god in the shape of the cross a vertical line from top to bottom and another line a horizontal line that goes right the cross the sign that goes from that goes vertically from top to bottom is the sign of your love for god your love heaven words and then the sign of the cross that goes from side to side from east to west and west to east that's love of your neighbor if you don't love your neighbor you cannot love god the sign that you love God is that you love your neighbor. So go forth in the earth and love your brother. If you don't love your brother, you cannot say you love God. 
The Bible calls you a liar if you say, oh, I love God, but I don't love my brother. I love God, but I don't show love to the people around me. The sign that you love the Lord is that you love your brother, that you love your sister, and you love those that are around you. Amen. Go forth and love. The power of love. Love is able to change this world, my friends. Not the earthly worldly love, but the heavenly love of the Father God. The love that's able to rebuke. The love that's able to correct. The love that's not condescending, but the love of God. Do you want to know about the love of God? Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and read today. And you will learn about what the love of God is. We don't have much time to cover it, but you can go read it. That's what the love of God is like. Amen. God bless you. God's love is powerful, my friends. Let that be an encouragement to you. Go forth today and love your brothers and love your sisters and love your family and love your neighbor and love your enemy also because Jesus tells us to. Amen. The power of love. Thank you for joining us in the devotion today. I'll see you in the next devotion. If you've not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do today. And if you've not if you've not liked the page on Facebook, please do today. God bless you. And I'll see you in the next devotion. Amen. Amen. Excited about love, my friends. Excited about it. God bless you. Bye-bye.